If you wanted to boost your neurotransmitters, you might think you could just eat more neurotransmitters. So having food that has a lot of dopamine or serotonin or oxytocin. Problem with that is your body's pretty good at digesting complex protein or neurotransmitters and breaking them down into smaller components. So you're just getting degraded chemical mush. Maybe to get around that, you might think you could boost your neurotransmitters by taking a precursor food like turkey that's rich in tryptophan, and tryptophan is a building block for making serotonin. Now that can work in some situations, but the downsides or the barriers to that are, one is, again, even precursor molecules do get broken down. It has to get from the bloodstream into the brain, and there's a blood-brain barrier which blocks some molecules. Three is, even if it gets into the brain and the cells that need it, if it's not involved in the rate-limiting step, you might just be providing more of an ingredient that isn't part of the process that's slowing down making that neurotransmitter. And four, even if you have more neurotransmitter, that doesn't mean more will be released when you need it to be released. Strategies that are most effective so far with our medications for boosting neurotransmitters are one, reuptake inhibitors. Reuptake inhibitors don't actually elevate the level of a neurotransmitter. They just allow it to last longer. We have medicines that interfere with breaking down and degrading that neurochemical, that neurotransmitter. So we have things like monoamine oxidase inhibitors can boost serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, which block the breakdown of acetylcholine. Then the bigger question is, why would you want to boost neurotransmitter levels, given that, at least in psychiatry so far, we haven't proven that any condition is determined by low levels of neurotransmitters.